Oh, it's not like we're going to be running out of CO2. We're really not. So I could just... We'll allow for an open, open top to it. Let's build it over here. And then we're going to want... Sure, we're going to bring in CO2 at the top. And I'm going to allow it to filter down through the entire stack. That's the idea. And you know, but well, I'm getting a little bit. I'm starting to feel a bit confident about this run. <laughs> I'd hope so, considering how long it's been going on for. Let's actually start using plastic ladders instead. Oh, wait, 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 plastic ladders. Melting point. Um. No. No. Alas, alas, we cannot use plastic ladders. Would have been nice, but alas, no. We'll use granite for how pretty it is. But it will have to be granted, unfortunately. And now at this point, it is all going to be... Well, do we... Hmm. Although technically, we don't actually need these to be mesh tiles, I would rather them be mesh tiles for the, uh, the aesthetic. So we'll roll with mesh tiles over here. As much as that is expensive to do. We'll roll with mesh tiles. Uh, on the inside, we don't need to, to temperature control these rooms realistically. It would be nice if we did. But while I'm just going to allow gases to vent out the top, it's not necessary. Maybe later on, though, it would be something we could do. And we could even have a liquid lock into these areas. Maybe once we've got um, visco gel or something like that. But for the time being... Well, you know what? I can plan for the future at the very least. Do something like this. Uh, cancel that, then. Because this is all going to be sealed off, actually. Uh, which is going to be a bit of an interesting one. Uh, I guess I'll allow a way out there. Because then on the outside, we're going to have this going all the way down. I'll need to completely decommission all of that. Uh, you know what? We will actually fill all of that in. On the outside. So I'll, I'll leave that exist as is for now. There we go. And then in here, uh, I'm actually going to give this one fairly high priority. And I'm going to bump the priority of these ones. Simply so I've got a platform upon which I can build the requisite buildings. Then the rest can be, uh, the rest can be dealt with over time. So we want... Uh, no, actually, well, we do want an incubator, so let's go ahead and plonk that one of those in. Right there. We want a grooming station. Don't need it made of steel. Unless, does it have, no, it, do, it doesn't have a uh, an operational. Ooh, let me just double check that the incubator doesn't. Does this have an overheat? Yes, it does. So I am going to have to build that one out of steel. But I don't believe the grooming station did. So double check. No. Okay. Uh, we will also want shipping. An auto super to move the eggs. It'll drop it into the... 
the uh, incubator if it can. And if it can't, it'll pop it in here, which will be a lower priority. We will also then have a crit drop off. This one does have overheat. Wow, oh, okay. So we'll have to have that one as well. But that will be everything we need in there. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have all of the incubators daisy chain. So, what I mean by that is this one will pick anything up off the, up, off the floor, put it in here. This one will drop it down here in the next chamber. So that if that chamber's incubator is empty, it'll get loaded in. If not, it'll get loaded into another one of these, and I'll go down to the third chamber. I'll probably only make it 3D. And if it can't fit into that incubator, it gets loaded into the next drop-off, and then that one actually ships it out and dumps it somewhere. That way, it'll it'll go through each one. If if I have room for an egg in any of the chambers, it'll get loaded in, in, into that chamber. Realistically, I could have two incubators in each chamber if I really wanted to. Hmm. Uh, Mary Curry, so, question about stream raiders. My wife's looking into being a streamer. What do you need to do to be a captain? Uh, when I signed up, it was still very much in early access, and so it was just a matter of, of contacting them, um, joining like a mailing list sort of thing, and they were handing out keys every so often. Um, like every week, they would they would invite a couple more captains into the game. At this point, I don't think that's the the case. So I'm afraid I couldn't tell you. Uh, I like well the way I did it is probably not going to be applicable to you. Um, but there is a stream um, raiders Discord. If you join there and ask in there, that that they will probably be able to point you in the right direction, at the very very least. Take care, Comorific. <laughs> You're welcome, mate. I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. But yeah, I I can either. Hmm, what do you think, Chad? Should we should we have two incubators per per room? I'm not going to power the incubators. They're just places for me to put the eggs. I could power the incubators. Maybe one day when I've got power. You know what? I actually like the idea of that. So in this case, then we're going to have. This be over here. Punk. And we're going to build another incubator. Out of steel once again. And that one over there. Actually, this... Well, no, I think that's that's reasonably good. It makes a very good use of the space as well. I'm always, always fond of making as efficient use of space as possible. And that one to be deconstructed as well. I actually want the, the shell of this room to be done as a reasonably high priority so let's try and get that done because then I can get all of this set up that little bit faster Put that in there I'll be sealing off this side so I'm not going to worry about putting doors there I'm only leaving there these there so that I can uh, break these down and then sweep them out Things sound like they might be on the verge of erupting. Let's go and have a look. 3.9 cycles there. Oh, oh, oh! Did I catch it in time? <gasps> My volcano senses were tingling! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! You see, I was worried about being distracted, but no. No. My volcano senses. Otherwise known as a dangerous sense, because if, if anything in, in nature is dangerous, it's a volcano. Okay, having having a sense specifically dedicated to informing you of when there is a nearby volcano about to erupt seems like just you know evolutionarily god uh, good sense, god sense. In fact, yeah, it was my god sense is kicking in. My danger sense just got a massive upgrade accidentally, but you know it's not going to complain. What's the point of having multiple stack rooms? Uh, I only need one pump at the bottom to withdraw the oil at the end. Oh, yes. Okay, let's have a quick look. 
It looks like the it's just dipping down right there. Okay, let's let's watch this slowly now, peeps. That ins that hasn't. Oh well, they they they're, they're picking it up straight away. Igneous rock. It's very hot. This is going to start warming this room up really fast. I super need this ice. This ice is not melting as fast as I had hoped. No, it did not. I really hoped that ice would melt faster. Well, I kind of figured the ice would basically flash. It did not. Hmm. How do we fix this now, chat? Because it will. But it's already melted these. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I can add water, but th again, the, the problem is, is it's polluted water, so it's going to off-gas. And either way now, this place has got a bunch of... Uh... bunch of magma in there. I guess the only thing I can do is, is realistically... Wait for the damage to be done, and then get in there. Could probably come through the top, I imagine, and try and, and fix it. But that that's a, that's a shame. There we go. That's what I needed. And the moment that happened, this all stopped being a problem. I mean, mind you, the steam is yeah, it's very hot steam. This is now dripping water in to try and help cool it. That's a bit of a shame. This room is going to be kept sensationally hot for quite some time. Everything in there is going to break. Then we're going to have to try and get inside and fix it. On the plus side, the steam engines are going to work. <laughs> but, you know, it's a small victory. Oh, actually, it was—it was gonna—it was gonna put in polluted water, was it? It was gonna put in clean water. Damn. Oh well. Uh. Hmm. Now, if I allowed all of this steam out, it would just wreck all these machines. So I can't do that. I basically need this to uh, stop. Well, it's idle now. The next time it's going to erupt is in. 15.7 cycles. It doesn't erupt very often, but this place is staggeringly hot. The, the temperature is coming down, though. We'll have time to get in there and try and fix it. Uh, we're going to want to make another liquid lock over on this side, though, to, to try and do that, I imagine, much the same way we, we fixed this one. That way, we don't have to lose the heat. Alright. So, we got a little bit of a project ahead of us, chat. A, t a tinsy, wincy project, but it's fine. I feel so cheeky, though, to do it that way. <laughs> I find it very hard, very hard, to justify that kind of uh, liquid lock, lock. Maybe... Yeah, there we go. Steam in here is now getting to a point where... Wow, that, that steam has actually really dropped in temperature. My lord, that did not... Like, yikes, that, that did not actually provide much power. You know what, once this once the steam is, is low enough in temperature. A quick look. Why why is more Oh the water's now come from the steam engines. Once the steam is down to about 120, we could we could just go in there and let, let the steam bounce out. 
Honestly, if we if we breached up here, it would just it would just escape. It, it wouldn't actually do any damage up here. You know what? Sorry, we're gonna we're gonna try and get in there. We're gonna try and fix this live. It's gonna break things. It's just gonna break things. We're just gonna have to accept that it's gonna break things, and the wrong stuff is gonna get inside, and it, it sucks. But let's get this done and get this done quickly. Now the question here is: Should we use copper in here? Not around here, obviously. We want steel for these parts of the uh, the system. Where there were problems, we'll replace them. Now, <laughs> really? Oh my lord, the, the game itself! I didn't even need to cheat this time! <laughs> the game cheated for me! Thank you, game. You cut me some slack, I approve. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> the game created its own water lock, so I wouldn't have to dirty my hands with it. Uh, good guy, game. That was glorious. <laughs> Game cheated in my favor, yeah. I super want this stuff fixed right now though. Let's let's get in there. Let's repair everything we can, please. Literally everything. Priority nine. Get in there, get it done so we can get back out. What's the igneous rock here like? That igneous rock is crazy hot. So once we can get this going, we may, like, once we've got all of that igneous rock rolling around in the system, it may, might actually work. It might be enough. Really? That turned to. I, what? How? What? I. Ha, how? Though? How is there. How? Okay, I grant you it's 7.6 tons of ice at minus 25 degrees, but it is in a room full of steam powered by magma. See, this is why. I don't take it too too seriously that this didn't go to plan. How could I plan around this? How could I plan around this? What I proposed to do seemed sensible. This does not. How? You're right. You're right. No, you're absolutely right, chat. I don't know that this isn't how it would work in real life. You're correct. I don't. I can't say for certain that in real life, if I threw a seven-ton chunk of ice into a pool of magma, that it wouldn't more or less instantly liquefy and turn into steam. You're right. I don't know. I just kind of feel that it would, though. <laughs> I sort of feel that it, it would. Ah, oh, what temperature we get. There we go. Now we've got all of this stuff moving around. We're starting to see some proper temperatures. That one's below 200. That one's below 200. Yeah, there we are. This is doing what it's meant to do. The odd bits of copper is actually getting getting uh, evacuated as well. See, I don't need to worry about all of this, because between them, these can pick up everything in this room. I 
I suspect the ice would skate across the top of the lava like a puck on an air hockey table. No, that, that absolutely makes sense, yeah, because ice is going to be way less dense than magma. Magma is, after all, liquid rock. Ice is solid water. And rock versus water, it, you know, it, it's really no contest on which one of them is going to be the denser material. So the ice wouldn't sink. I think there would have to be some some other force at work to make ice sink in, into, into lava. But while it was skating across the surface of the lava, I imagine you'd be get, creating a very thin film of, of skin across the lava where the ice was skating across it. And the ice would almost... W that, like, I, I imagine the ice would not be losing speed very quickly because any kind of friction would be counteracted with the fact that where the ice is touching the, mag the, the lava, it would be flashing to steam. So it would almost be like a hovercraft in my head. This is how it would work in my head when I'm seriously trying to have a think about it. I imagine that if you threw a huge, honking, great, massive chunk of ice at a lake of lava, it would blast across it, hissing as it was going. And it would just be kind of bobbing and, and skating almost by the power of, of the steam that it was releasing underneath itself. It would be grand, whatever would happen. You know what I need to know what would happen? I, I, I'm going to add this experiment to my bucket list. When I'm a billionaire th philanthropist, one of the things I'm going to do for humanity is answer with certainty. The ages old question of what would happen if you threw a, a seven ton block of ice onto a lake of lava. I will answer this question for all of the generations that will come behind me. They, 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 will, they will know. They will never live in a world where we don't know what would happen if you threw a many ton block of ice at lava. We live in the dark ages, chat, but I will shine the light of enlightenment upon uh, upon this, this, this Stygian depth. I will scare away the shadows, and we will finally know the important answers. Yeah, it will probably be the same as spilling liquid nitrogen, Greg, so yeah, more or less. We will get to battle the moment I know that this is not going to allow a bunch of, of badness into the system. I need that fixed, like right now. Then I need this one done right now as well. Also, I need this room really cooled down because, wow, this is too hot. Poor liquid pipe. It's entering at a, a very respectable 12 degrees. It's leaving at 40. The base cooling is going to take a bit of a pounding, but oh well. It's a thing that happens, I suppose. Yeah, now this system is uh, is doing relatively well, I would say. It's producing quite a lot of heat. Uh, of, uh, of energy. And it's going to be producing that energy for a long time. Also, this ice is still minus 20. How? How is this... <laughs> I know it's 7.6 tons, but surely, surely it should be shedding its mass faster than this. But this is where I think the problem lies in, in Oni. It's treating this, this 7.6 ton block of ice as atomic. And if you're not, not sure what I mean when I say atomic, um, in, in scientific terms, even though you can actually split an atom, atomic is usually a, a word you use for something that is indivisible. Um, so, uh, if, something, if some action were atomic, you couldn't start it without finishing it. It is, by its very nature, going to conclude. It no once it begins, nothing can stop it. It has to finish doing what it's doing. Um, and you can use that to describe like critical systems, for for example, like, you know, I, I don't know, you might you might see that that term ironically used quite a lot in, in, in nuclear science um, for things that that have to that have to finish once they've started. But nevertheless, it's treating this this block of ice as atomic. That is, it can't. It the entire seven ton, point six tons of it has to melt. A part of it can't melt. The entire thing needs to heat up, which is why this isn't working the way that we are realistically thinking about it. Because in reality, it would be getting smaller very quickly. The outer shell of this block of ice would be liquefying and then boiling. 
and it would be continually happening. And so it wouldn't it wouldn't be a 7.6 ton block of ice that was minus 22 slowly getting warmer. It would be an increasingly smaller block of ice that was getting warmer at an increasingly faster pace because it was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> Greg, maybe it's just a long rod of ice stretching backwards. So to us, it looks like a small dot, but it is actually an enormous rod of ice. And that's, that explains the 7.6 tons. But yes, okay, so the system is running. We got it fixed. It's doing what it's meant to do. It's keeping really, really, really hot. And we are actually shedding lots of uh, material out here. This is doing well. It's doing well, and we've now got a little layer of water in here as well to, to cool down the, the engines a little bit. But uh, the last thing we're going to check before we go and check in on uh, stream rate is this is coming in at 7, 7 degrees. This room is hot. This room is very warm. So the liquid's coming in at 6.7 degrees, 6.7. By here, it is 14 degrees. By here, it's 20-ish. There it's 25-ish, but there it's 20... Well, it's still about 25. And actually, it's going down. Around here... Okay, so it, it's sort of dealing with itself. I imagine, overall, this is getting cooler rather than hotter. Yeah, it's slowly getting cooler. So the, the natural cooling of the rest of the, 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 the icy biome is compensating. Now, part of that is because we flooded this room with crazy hot, like, 500 degrees steam. So this was a flash in the pan, literally. Um, it will eventually fix itself. But yeah, so the system, the system works, everyone. Hooray! Hooray for science! We are generating energy out of a volcano. And we're also generating enormous amounts of igneous rock. That igneous rock can later be fed to an enormous, enormous, a frankly monstrous collection of hatches who will be pooping out coal until the end of time uh, to run our coal generators. <laughs> We are getting very close to not having power problems anymore, anyway. Very close. Super close now. Very, very, very glad. Uh, yeah, I upgraded the broken bits. For those asking, before we jump into Steam Raiders, wherever the, the, the conveyor rails melted, I replaced them with copper. Uh, sorry, with, with steel, so that they wouldn't melt again. Honestly, I very much doubt we'll ever see that happen, because there is now so much, uh, so much um, water in here that it shouldn't be a problem. We should never again see that happen. If we do, if the temperature gets above 200, and, uh, 200 degrees in, oh, sorry, uh, what is it, 205 degrees in here, we're going to start adding more water to the system. So eventually, this is going to be full of hundreds upon hundreds of kilos of steam. That weight of steam, that, that mass of steam, will be able to, to manage to absorb enormous quantities of, of heat energy. Or rather, just, you know, energy, but, you know, it makes it a little bit uh, more clear what I'm talking about there. Uh, is this one about ready to... Oh, this one's active. Or will be. When is it going to erupt? In 0.4 cycles. Okay, well, we're going to leave this pause while we go and check on Steam Raiders. 